Welcome to Bible for Overcomers. So let me ask you a question. If you claim the name of Jesus, what is your answer when somebody says, what does it mean to be a Christian? So I think for the first perhaps half or better of my Christian life, my answer would have been, as it is for many, that I'm saved. Saved from hell. I am saved from my sins. I have been reunited with God, but I'm saved. And in, in that, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not the whole reason why Jesus came, it's just to save you and I from the just punishment for our sins. Nor was it also, which is on a greater level, to reunite us with the Father. But when you see that he came, that he might purify unto himself a peculiar people, a people that are, as Titus says, zealous of good works, and as Matthew 6 says, that we would love the Lord our God with all that is within us. In fact, here's a good rendering in Mark, Mark chapter 12 and verse 30, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And the second, of course, is that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This, the way we, many of us, I don't mean to speak for you, but many of us, we define Christianity first and foremost because we are saved from that punishment of hell. Now remember Jesus talked more and he spoke more graphically about hell than he did about heaven. And of course that's not popular. I don't like to speak on it. But that is the reality of the Gospels when you look therein. And we are saved that we might be enabled through his Holy Ghost within us to love God and to live out this book through his help. For without me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. We are called to do good works, but it is God that works it in us. The only thing we are doing is responding in the affirmative. That, yes, God, I want to serve you. Use me. Use me for your glory. And we always hide in the shadow of the cross. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So I think for me and for many of us, we would define being a Christian as first and foremost from the self-centered aspect of it, from the I, the me, the we, the our, saved. But yet when you become more mature as a Christian, you start to fall in love with Jesus Christ more and more, with God the Father. You recognize, because hopefully you've gained discernment in your, as you mature as a Christian, and you understand all the evil that is afoot, and we are to fight against the evil, loving the sinners, obviously, but fighting against the evil, because this is God's creation, and we are called to occupy until he comes. So the second, the, when you get more mature in Christ, I really believe that you will love God more. And when somebody asks you to define in one sentence or briefly what it means to be a Christian, it's that you have been awakened to God. Now, you could perhaps define this your own way and better than I can. But for me, I would say I am reunited with God and I know that he loves me and he want, he's called us to service, he's called us to glorify him because this faith is a faith of movement and momentum, of having real love, and we love God. So that, that verse here in Mark 12, 30, that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that starts to transcend the more self-centered thing is, I'm a Christian because I wanted to be saved from hell, that I wanted to go to heaven, I want rewards and all this. Yeah, amen to that. But as we mature, 1 Corinthians 13, the charity or the love chapter, um, now abides faith, hope, charity, but the greatest of these is charity. And of course, that's talking about love. That's not talking about having your arm twisted behind your back to give to some NGO that's going to use about 80 cents of every dollar you send them on their own salaries and on their own plush headquarters. 
No, it's about us loving God. So I would say it's something to think about. Sila, stop, meditate, and think upon these things. And there's another verse too um, here in um, John 13:35. says, oh, we'll start with 34. When you really start to live and, and operate in God's will, then it says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If you, you live out this Christian faith only rejoicing in the fact that, you're, that you are saved from hellfire, and I, I know in plenty of verses, Psalm Psalm 32, uh, it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Yes, blessed are we. But I would think that blessed is the man or woman, boy or girl, who grasps a hold of the fact that they are called to live higher on a higher plane through God's help and to love God first and foremost with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And as much as within us, to, love, to be at peace with one another, to love our neighbor as ourselves, not in a sloppy love, but according to the scriptures, a love tempered by purity, not a sloppy agape. When we get to that point, I think we are much more apt to hear God when he speaks to us, that still small voice as Elijah heard, and we are able to walk more pleasingly to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just something to think about. For where our heart is, or where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. Is it just in the fact, my friend, that we are saved? Or is it in, in the fact that he's called us on this glorious, majestic gospel mission to hold up that which is good, to proclaim that which is true, to show forth Jesus, and to fight against the works of of the devil. Did you know that is part of our calling? But Jesus said that he has come that he might destroy the works of the devil. But anyway, something to think about. How would you define being a Christian? And it's like the worst person that you can see, right? It's the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror. When you look at the mirror, you know, you know if you are living as God has called you to live. You know whether you are doing the best that you can do through his grace and help. Let us always love God.